I will briefly introduce what uh, economic evaluation is, and I will focus on economic models in AKI. Later on, I will present a few studies in this topic, and uh, I will present a study that we just started in Vicenza. It is actually on the Nefrocheck test. So, first of all, it is important to define what economic evaluation is. Economic evaluation is a tool for assessing the, the consequences, the benefits and the costs of competing uses of scarce resources. This is necessary to ensure that uh, scarce resources are directed towards the highest potential use. Healthcare economic, health economics is the application of the tools, the concepts, the theory of uh, uh, economics to health and healthcare. It is the analysis of the consequences in terms of costs and benefits of using new therapies as compared to their available alternatives. Currently, I work at the International Renal Research Institute in Vicenza uh, in a multidisciplinary environment. So the multidisciplinary team is composed by experts in different fields from physicians to engineers, um, biologists, pharmacists, nutritionists, psychologists, and of course also economists. But what is the role of an economist within such a multidisciplinary team? Well, um, economists take part in the um, evaluation process of um, new health technologies by means of assessing the, um, um, by means of um, analyzing the, uh, the, the available projects to maximize the benefits and at the same time minimizing the cost. This is a necessary step in order to allocate resources among the possible available investments. This is always done with a cost effectiveness analysis and um, this ensures the financial sustainability also over the medium to long term of the, of the project. This is necessary because the healthcare system actually um, doesn't have unlimited resources. We have to cope with limited resources. So among the possible investment, we need to make a choice. We need to prioritize those investments that deliver the highest benefits and at the same time do not waste resources. Health technology assessment in, in this view is a decision support tool involved in the, in the decision process. So by health technology, I remind you that we refer to a wide range of healthcare interventions. So from pharmaceutical to devices, um, vaccines, medical and surgical procedures, but also more in general, organizational system and public health interventions. So health technology assessment can be defined as a multidisciplinary process that evaluates the impact of a new health technology throughout its lifespan. And uh, the, the issues that are addressed in this, in this process are safety. So is the technology manageable? Then efficacy, does the technology work in a control trial? But then is it effective? Does it work under real world condition in the clinical routine? The focus of uh, economics is cost effectiveness, which answers to the questions to the question, is the benefit delivered by the new technology worth the resources that we invest in it? Then a uh, complete uh, decision process must also address issues such as the organizational impact and uh, the ethic and, and social impact. There has been um, increasing attention toward the economic evaluation of healthcare programs. This is shown by the increasing number of papers published on the topic, the increasing space given <coughs> in, um, in journals that actually deal with ICU management, for example. And uh, the point is that, for sure, the final aim is to improve the, pa the, pa um, the patient's outcome. But at the same time, we should not waste resources that are precious, that are scarce. Now I will move to the, to the case of acute kidney injury. So AKI, as you know, occurs commonly after cardiac surgery and in ICU with an incidence that is around 50% and 25% respectively. AKI is associated with adverse clinical outcomes such as increased morbidity, increased mortality, uh, additional uh, um, therapies required, renal replacement therapy, first of all, and longer hospital stay. But adverse clinical, <coughs> clinical outcome also occur in the medium to long term as a higher 
risk of progressing to CKD and the reduced quality of life. Consequently, AKI has a relevant economic impact. It has been estimated that the, the AKI-related inpatient care costs in England are around one billion pounds, and uh, the light, uh, lifetime costs, so the post-discharge costs associated to the development of AKI are around uh, 180 million pounds. Nowadays, there is no consensus on the most um, appropriate um, therapy, the most appro uh, appropriate um, way to manage AKI. So prevention is the crucial point, is the crucial issue when we talk about management of AKI and the minimization of the costs associated to AKI. Now we'll present a few studies before moving to the, to the project that we started in Vicenza. The first one is the economic evaluation of intravenous iodinated contrast media in Italy. This is a cost effectiveness analysis where two uh, contrast media procedures were compared. On the one side, the iodixanol contrast medium, and on the other side, the low osmolar contrast medium. The, in, the focus of the study was on the incidence of contrast-induced AKI following the, the contrast medium procedure. And uh, the, the study was developed as a Markov model with four possible health outcomes. So first of all, the contrast-induced AKI-free state, the contrast-induced AKI state, the myocardial infarction, and death. The costs accounted for in this analysis are the costs related to the contrast medium procedure and the costs of the um, deriving, deriving from the adverse clinical outcome. So, so in this table, you can see the, the results from the base case analysis uh, in, expressed in terms of benefits and the costs. You can see the, that the iodixanol procedure is associated with higher benefits in terms of um, a lower number of myocardial infarction events and um, higher discounted lifetime years gained. And at the same time, the total costs associated to this procedure are lower. So we say that the iodixanol procedure is dominant in terms of cost effectiveness with respect to the low osmolar contrast medium strategy, the contrast medium procedure. Then another, um, another paper that I would like to, to mention is the one concerning the economic impact and cost effectiveness of urinary angal for the early prediction of AKI following cardiac surgery. This is a cost effectiveness analysis comparing the use of uh, urinary angal and uh, the currently adopted um, procedure for the diagnosis of AKI based, based on serum creatinine and urinary output. The idea at the basis of this paper is that urinary angal may allow an earlier diagnosis of AKI, thus enabling um, earlier initiated therapies and therefore reducing the costs associated to AKI. In this table, you can see the results from this analysis. In the first column, there are the costs and the effectiveness in terms of quality-adjusted life years of the standard of the current adopted di diagnostic methods. And in the other columns, there are the results associated to uh, urinary angle. The authors account for three scenarios in terms of the improvements due to an earlier diagnosis. So a more conservative one, a base case, and a more optimistic one. In any case, you can see that the NGAL diagnostic method is once again dominant with the current strategy. Now let me talk about the project that we started in Vicenza. It is an economic evaluation of the nephrocheck test for the early prediction of AKI. As you already know, the nephrocheck test uh, measures the concentration of two biomarkers, TIMP2 and IGF-BP7. They are two soluble proteins expressed in the kidneys involved in the early phase of the injury. Their performance as biomarkers used together has already been assessed in, and in the validation study it was found that uh, they have an area under the curve of 0.8 for the prediction of AKI stages 2 and 3 within 12 hours following the test assessment. So, why are we um, willing to, to develop this study? 
this curve resembles the steps that lead to the diffusion of a new technology, of a new innovation. We are still in the early phase of the, of the technology adoption process. And uh, of course, we want some evidence that uh, this technology is superior to the current ones. So we need to, um, to, pro to provide this evidence through studies. <clears throat> and this is exactly what we would like to do. So to find out if this technology is effective, if it is cost effective. So this is the design of our study. It involves a retrospective phase covering the years 2014, 2015, and then a prospective phase that just started on the 1st June 2016. So more in, going more into details, in the retrospective phase, we, will, we considered the, a cohort of patients undergoing cardiac surgery during 2014. And we developed a model for AKI risk prediction following cardiac surgery based on patients' characteristics at admission, on surgical procedures, and early postoperative treatments. Then we applied this model to a cohort of patients that underwent cardiac surgery during 2015, for whom nephrocheck test assessments were already available at several time points following cardiac surgery. Then the, the prospective phase consists in the use of the nephrocheck test routinely uh, at the San Bortolo Hospital in Vicenza. In particular, the nephrocheck test will be used on all the patients at admission in the ICU and six hours after cardiac surgery. It is important to point out that the nephrocheck test provides a value for the biomarkers and a threshold has already been identified at 0.3. This means that if the, bio, if the test provides a value for the biomarker that is higher than 0.3, then the patient has a high risk of developing AKI in the following 12 hours. This means that nephroprotective measures must be applied, must be undertaken. And uh, in this sheet, I think you can read all the measures, the actions that um, the physicians involved in the study, according to the KDIGO measures, uh, must undertake in order to prevent the worsening of patient conditions to improve their outcome. So to sum up the purposes of our study, first of all, we want to evaluate the predictive ability of the nephrocheck test both independently and also um, we want to see how it improves AKI risk prediction through the model that we developed. Then we need to compare the nephrocheck test to the current diagnostic methods. This will allow us to assess the possible cost savings arising from earlier initiated therapy, from, er from a more careful monitoring of the patient that appears to be at a high risk of developing AKI. I would like to stress one more time that this is a pragmatic trial. This means that the intervention is applied in a clinical routine. This enables us to assess the, the risk, the cost, and the benefits associated to the use of the nephrocheck test in the clinical routine as it will appear, therefore, under real world condition. We expect an announcement of the current diagnostic procedures and uh, the possibility to identify those uh, behaviors that actually allow us to manage AKI and prevent the worsening of patient conditions. Of course, the final aim is to improve the patient conditions, but uh, keeping an eye on uh, the economic possible um, implication of the use of the nephrocheck test. So thank you very much. <laughs>